over, not possibly by the end of the year, not in the next Congress, but now. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator from Texas is recognized. Mr. President, I just wanted to get the time um, for our side and uh, the time for the bill sponsor's side and clarify that um, the uh, people on our side would have 15 minutes. The, is that correct? The, the, the time is divided between the two leaders or their designees. The Republican side has uh, nine, approximately nine minutes, and the Demo majority side has 16 minutes. And uh, I just wanted to clarify that there would be time for um, the opposition side. Um, I didn't know if Senator Collins is speaking for the majority side then or for the minority side. I'm just trying to clarify to assure that um, the opposition gets some uh, equal amount of time or close to equal. Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut. Mr. President, the way I understand this, it's a bit confusing to say the two leaders, but I think this is a question of 15 minutes for proponents of the pending measure and 15 minutes for those opposed. And I would ask consent that that be the case. Mr. President. Is, is there objection? Mr. President, reserving the right to object. It is my understanding that I am managing the, the time on the Republican side. I, of course, want to make sure uh, that the senator from Texas is treated fairly and it's given an opportunity to present her views. Uh, but it was my understanding that the 15 minutes is allocated to me to dole out on our, or to allocate on our side. Mr. President, then how much time would the proponents have with Senator Collins and Senator Lieberman on the proponent side in that case? The, the time is divided between the two sides, not the, uh, between the proponents and opponents. So, Mr. President, and how much time then would be left on the uh, Senator Collins? Uh, it's seven minutes is left on the Republican side. The majority side has uh, 15 President, and a half. Mr. President, minutes. I would just ask consent that the opponents have at least 10 minutes. Mr. Is there, President, is there objection? There, I have no objection to that. It, without objection. Joe, did you? You want to go? Mr. President, I would like to be notified when I have five minutes left because Senator McCain uh, is expected on the floor and if Senator Chambliss or others come, I would like to have the uh, time. The chair will do so. Mr. President, um, I rise to express my disappointment that we are taking a vote that is very premature. Not that we haven't been discussing this bill for uh, over a year, and I have certainly been one of the first to say that we should vote on a cybersecurity bill. But, Mr. President, this is a complicated bill. It is a bill that didn't get marked up in committee, and in our discussions, we are talking about amendments, but and I want to say that the uh, proponents of the bill before us have certainly been willing to talk and adjust and, and try to make uh, changes in the bill, but it is not there yet. Uh, and even though we have been meeting pretty much constantly, there are uh, three different uh, groups that have a very strong interest all of us interested in getting a cybersecurity bill, but none of us liking uh, what is before us. Well, obviously the proponents of the bill like what's before us, but two other groups are very concerned about uh, further needs in the bill. Let, let me just say that 
we have an alternative called Secure IT. Uh, it is co-sponsored by eight of the ranking members of committees and subcommittees that have jurisdiction over cybersecurity. Uh, Senators McCain, myself, Chambliss, Grassley, Murkowski, Coates, Burr, and Johnson uh, are co-sponsoring a bill that could pass the House and go to the President. My concern with Senate Bill 3414, on which we are voting on cloture, is on the process because we have not had a chance to amend this bill, and the majority leader is attempting to vote cloture, fill the tree, so that we are not able to put any amendments on this bill at all. And it is a bill that will not get 41 votes for sure, and uh, there are many others who are very concerned about the substance of the bill. You can't have a bill with no amendments that is this important and this technical. Let me just state some of my concerns on the bill before us. First, it will actually undermine the current information sharing between the government and the private sector. The biggest priority we have is to get the private sector to the table and to make sure that they have the ability to not only give information to the government, but get information from the government and furthermore be able to share among the other industries if they see a cyber threat on an expedited basis. Number two, the Department of Homeland Security would be granted authority over standard setting for private sector systems. That is unacceptable in the private sector and most certainly is not going to produce what is a consensus for getting the information that we need. It assumes that government must take the adversarial role against private network owners in order to get cooperation, when in fact both the government and the private sector share the same goal of increased cybersecurity. Let me read from a couple of letters that we have received with concerns about this bill. The American Bankers Association, the Financial Services Roundtable, the Consumer Bankers Association, and six other organizations say this legislation threatens to undermine important cybersecurity protections already in place for our customers and institutions. It misses an opportunity to substantially improve cyber threat information sharing between the federal government and the private sector. The National Association of Manufacturers say the creation of a new government-administered program in an agency yet to be named forces unnecessary regulatory uncertainty on the private sector. The defense industry groups are very concerned about not having direct access to the National Security Agency with whom they deal now, and this bill would take that away from their capabilities. Senator's five minutes has expired. Mr. President, let me, um, let me ask my colleagues. I, I have reserved the five minutes that I have for uh, opponents, and is that going to change, Senator Lieberman, or are we, if, if not, I will give two and a half minutes each to Senator McCain and Senator Chambliss of my five minutes. Uh, Mr. President, through you, I, I think that's the situation we're in because the vote's set to go off in uh, a little more than 15 minutes, and I haven't <laughs> spoken yet. <laughs> Uh, Mr. President, then I would just ask my colleagues, uh, Senator McCain, I can give two and a half minutes, and Senator Chambliss, and while they're going to their microphones, just say that they have been instrumental in uh, trying to get a consensus bill and, like myself, are very disappointed that we are prematurely voting uh, on a cloture when we have had no ability to amend this bill. I, I give uh, two and a half minutes to Senator McCain. Sen Senator from Arizona is recognized. Well, Mr. President, I want to again thank Senator Lieberman and Senator Collins uh, for their willingness to uh, negotiate seriously. Uh, I want to thank uh, also Senator Chambliss as well as Senator Hutchison and, and many others, and Senator Kyle and others. We've had large meetings, small meetings, medium-sized meetings. We've had discussions with various groups. I believe that we sort of had the outlines of a framework that we could have had a certain number of amendments that we all agreed to that would be voted on and at the same time 
prevail upon some of our colleagues not to have non-germane amendments. Unfortunately, the First Amendment uh, proposed by the majority leader has to do with tax cuts. Um, look, I think, I say to my colleagues, I think we have developed a framework where we could move forward with a certain number of germane amendments. All of us appreciate how important this issue is. And so I don't see the need for this vote. Cloture will not be invoked. All it will do is embed people in their previously held positions. What we should be doing is continuing the productive negotiations and discussions that we had all during yesterday, put off this cloture vote, and try to come to some agreement in recognition that cybersecurity is a vital national security issue. We all recognize that. And we, and we started out very much poles apart. I think that there has been some agreements made, which we, I view as significant progress. So I regret, I say to Senator Lieberman and Senator Collins and the rest of my colleagues, that we are taking this vote when we should be spending our time uh, at least certainly the rest of the day setting up a framework that we could ad address cybersecurity during the first week that we are back in, in September. But it is what it is, and I want to thank again Senator Lieberman and Senator Collins for their willingness to sit down and negotiate. We still have significant differences, but I think that those could have been resolved. I hope that this vote does not have a chilling effect on what I think was progress that was being made. Senator's time has expired. Uh, issues of transparency and information sharing and others, there are still some differences, but those differences have been narrowed. I thank my colleagues, and I thank my colleagues for their hard work. Mr. President. Senator from Georgia is recognized. Mr. President, let me just add to what uh, Senator McCain said. We have been working very hard with the sponsors of the base bill, Senator Lever and Senator Collins, who have been very receptive and very open to our dialogue over the last uh, several days and weeks. And it's an indication, number one, that everybody in this body recognizes the seriousness of this issue. But it's also a recognition of the complexity of this issue. There are about four or five committees of jurisdiction that have uh, a piece of, of the issue of cybersecurity, and unfortunately, we did not go through the regular order of giving all of those committees the opportunity to go through the regular markup process, and if that may or may not have solved some of the issues we're now dealing with, but we're down to uh, the very final minutes before a cloture vote, and unfortunately, uh, I'm going to vote against cloture, and I would recommend that my colleagues do likewise and that we continue over, the, over this break to negotiate on the remaining issues that we have, which certainly have been narrowed in number as well as in scope. Both sides are negotiating in good faith because we all understand that this is such an, an issue of such critical importance. The basic philosophical difference we have is that we all seek to protect the private sector from cyber attacks that may have a huge impact on life or on our, our economy. And the issue is, primarily, does the government know better how to do that, or does the private sector know better how to protect itself, as we think? And while we're, uh, we understand the government has a role to play, we have capabilities and capacities within the federal government that the private sector does not have. We recognize that. And that's why we've been negotiating in good faith to try to find that common ground between Senator's the government and the private sector to ensure the protection of the basic critical infrastructure in this country. Now, President, thank, thank the President. Mr. President, could I just Senator ask from Texas. consent to uh, submit for the record the two letters from which I read in my statement and Without objection. an article of, from the Wall Street Journal this morning uh, on this issue. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President, and I thank the Senator from Connecticut. Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut is uh, recognized. I thank the Chair. I rise to speak on the uh, vote that we'll have in about 10 minutes. Uh, Mr. President, I'm going to be real personal in my statement today. Uh, this is one of those uh, days when I fear for our country 
and I'm not uh, proud of the United States Senate. Uh, we've got a, a, a crisis, and it's one that we all acknowledge. Uh, it's not just that there's a theoretical or speculative threat of cyber attack against our country. It's real. It's happening now. Most people don't know it because a lot of people attack don't want to announce it because they're embarrassed. Um, a lot of companies are attacked who control critical cyber infrastructure have been attacked, in fact, have what I called yesterday secret uh, uh, cyber attack cells planted in their computer systems that control the kind of systems that we depend on uh, for the quality of our life in some ways for our lives and, and they don't know it. I tell you, General Keith Alexander, Director of Cyber Command at the Pentagon, said the other day that when it comes to cyber war, we are today where we were in 1993 in our war with Islamist terrorism after they blew up the truck bomb in the parking garage at the World Trade Center. We were attacked. It, it, it shook us up for a while, but people forgot about it. Uh, at least in that case, we knew we had been attacked. Now we're attacked every day, and uh, most people don't know it. Maybe there's a story in the paper one day they read it or on TV and then, and then they forget about it. So the question is, are we going to act before we get to the cyber 9-11, uh, as we obviously did in the attacks that uh, in the war uh, we were in without acknowledging it with Islamist terrorism. So we, we pretty much all agree on that here, and yet um, we, we've descended once again to gridlock to uh, a partisan attack and counterattack. And the end result of that is a lot of sound and fury that will accomplish nothing and we will leave our country uh, vulnerable. Mr. President, uh, the fact is, as, as the Majority Leader announced earlier in the week, that we've been on this for a long time. Senator Collins and I have, have uh, uh, tried to be flexible. We've been open to compromise, not of principle, but of how much we thought we could get passed through the Senate because the threat is so urgent, we can't afford to uh, insist on everything we thought was in the best interest of our country. So we made a mandatory system voluntary, but still that's not been enough. Senator Reid said uh, if there's an agreement on a, on a finite list of amendments, and they're germane and relevant to the bill, not off taking your favorite political uh, shot through this bill, uh, message uh, uh, opportunity, political message opportunity, then he would take it up in September. As soon as we came back, we'd have a limited time on it. We'd go to final passage, and the Senate would work its will. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to agree on such a list. There's still non-germane, irrelevant amendments that are on the list. Our friends in the Republican caucus have, about, have whittled their list down to 58 amendments. Frankly, I don't worry about the number as much as the fact that Senator Reid was right, the majority leader was right. This bill and the threat of cyber attack, cyber theft are too important uh, to use as yet another vehicle for partisan ideological shots at one another. Save those for another day. So here we are, we're heading to a cloture vote. And, um, Right now, it looks like it's going to lose. Uh, I hope not. Uh, hope springs eternal, at least for about 25 minutes more. I'd say to my friends, if, really, if you believe that, cyber, that we're in a cyber war and that we're inadequately defended, particularly the part of our cyber infrastructure that's controlled by the private sector, then, then vote for cloture. It's the only way we're going to get to this bill. Vote for cloture. And remember something. <laughs> we're just one of two chambers of the Congress of the United States. Uh, whatever passes the Senate still has to go to a conference with the House. Uh, the House approach on this is very different, and we're going to have to do even more negotiating and, uh, and give and take. So I appeal to my colleagues, uh, make a principled vote here, uh, and, and vote in a way that says to the country and your constituents, two things. One is you recognize the threat. We recognize that we're in a cyber war now and we're undefended, inadequately defended. And secondly, uh, by voting to, for cloture, which means we'll take the bill up, you're saying uh, we're willing to work together across party lines to try to get something 
done. In my opinion, uh, it's the only way we're going to get to this bill. Now, if cloture uh, is not granted as disappointed and angry as I'm going to be, I, 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 I'm not going to be petulant. I'm going to be open <laughs> today, tomorrow, as long as we have an opportunity in this session of Congress to work with colleagues to try to reach an agreement that will help us improve our cyber defenses. Sometimes in uh, moments of, uh, of disappointment, I go back to the great uh, Winston Churchill. And so I want to just uh, read a few comments from him. These were all in the 30s when he was in the House of Commons and concerned that England and the world faced a threat, which uh, they were not acknowledging, which was the rise of uh, Nazi Germany. And uh, first he said, and I, I hate to say it, it relates to where we are now today, he said about um, those who refuse to act decisively to counter the clear and growing threat of a resurgent and rearmed Nazi Germany during the 30s, quote, they go on in strange paradox, decided only to be undecided, resolved to be irresolute, adamant for drift, solid for fluidity, end of quote. I'm afraid that's the, that's the message we're going to send to the country and to our enemies. If we don't get together and pass a cybersecurity bill in this session of Congress, I, again, Churchill said that he was staggered after, long, after his long parliamentary experience with the debates that he was going through on this question during the 30s by two things. First has been the dangers that have been so swiftly, that have so swiftly come upon us in a few years and have been transforming our position and the whole outlook of the world. That's actually where we are with regard to cyber war, although most people don't understand that. We do. But second, he said, Churchill, I quote, I've been staggered by the failure of, of the House to react, he means the House of Commons, to react effectively against those dangers. That I am bound to say I never expected. I say that unless we find our resolve we will have committed an act of abdication of duty. And, and I, I, I end with those words. I mean, I think it's that serious. If we don't find a way, either by voting for cloture today to get on the bill so we can negotiate, or continuing to negotiate if cloture fails, it will be, quite simply, a colossal abdication of duty uh, to the people of the United States and uh, to their security. I thank the would my Would my friend uh, uh, yield me some time? I think our side is up. I, I will. Uh, I, I yield to my friend from Indiana. I, I thank the Senator. I want to, uh, first of all... Senator uh, from Indiana, it's recognized. I want to, first of all, commend all the Republicans and Democrats that have worked so hard together, nearly a fifth of us in this Congress, hour after hour, meeting after meeting, uh, the flexibility that has been provided by both sides, by Senator Lieberman and Senator Collins on their bill, by Senator Saxby, Senator McCain, Senator Hutchison and others in terms of trying to reach a consensus on this. Uh, those, who have list those who listened to the Senator from Maryland yesterday know uh, we're, we're given the unclassified version of the nature of this threat, and that's scary enough. Uh, Add to that the classified, and it's uh, truly a, uh, a threat that needs to be addressed. It is despicable, I think, that the, maj that the uh, majority leader of the United States Senate, when we were so close to putting together something to bring a joint support for what everybody knows we need to do and wants to do, so close with agreements from Democrats and Republicans, ranking members and chairmen, uh, chairwoman of the, of, the, of the relevant committees uh, and, and presenting a package which would, would grant limited time and limited germane amendments to deny us that opportunity. And yet here we are faced with the dilemma of, a, of, of an imminent threat facing the people of the United States of America uh, and a vote whether to continue the process, to continue to work or something that potentially could kill this for the rest of the session and maybe even next year, or something that grants to the White House an abuse of executive power to mandate things uh, through executive order that we've seen in a number of other provisions. I'm, I'm not, maybe that's their motive, maybe it isn't, I don't know. Nevertheless, we're faced with a very critical choice here in terms of a very imminent threat to the people of the, uh, to the security of the United States and to the American people. And I hope all my colleagues will take that into consideration when we decide what to do here. But I do thank people from both sides for the tremendous efforts that have been made 
and we shouldn't be pointing fingers of blame at each other. Uh, there's a real effort here to join together to address this very, very serious threat to the United States. I thank my friend uh, from Connecticut and yield back uh, to him. Okay. The clerk will report the motion to invoke cloture. We, the undersigned senators, in accordance with the provisions of Rule 22 of the Standing Rules of the Senate, hereby move to bring to a close debate on S. 3414, a bill to enhance the security <coughs> and resiliency of the cyber and communications infrastructure in the United States, signed by 17 senators. By unanimous consent, the mandatory quorum call has been waived. The question is, is it the sense of the Senate the debate on S-3414, a bill to enhance the security and resiliency of the cyber and communications infrastructure of the United States, shall be brought to a close? The yeas and nays are mandatory under the rule. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Ayotte, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Balkis, Mr. Beckage, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Carden, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coon, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Enhoff, Mr. Inoue, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, 
Mr. Pryor. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Risch. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. Uh, that's Mr. Sanders. Mr. Schumer. Thank you. Mr. Sessions. Mrs. Shaheen. Mr. Shelby. Ms. Snow. Ms. Tabanow. Mr. Tester. Mr. Thune. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Brown of Ohio, Collins, Lieberman, Reed of Nevada, and Rockefeller. Senators voting in the negative. Chambliss, Cornyn, Hutchison, McConnell, and Vitter. Mr. Beckage, aye. Mr. Manchin, aye.
Ms. Cantwell, aye. Ms. Carey. Mr. Carey, aye. Mr. Johans, no. <laughs> Mr. Sanders, aye. Mr. Wyden, no. Mr. Conrad, aye. Strenzi, no. Mr. Nelson of Florida. Aye. Mr. Hatch, no. Ms. Ayotte, no. Ms. Mikulski, Ms. Mikulski, aye. Mr. Isaacson, no. Franken. Mr. Franken, aye. Mr. Dement, no. Mr. Levin, Mr. Coburn, no. Mr. Akaka, aye. Mr. Grassley, Mr. Grassley, no. Mr. Luger, aye. Mr. Carden, 
Mr. Cardin, aye. Mr. Bennett, aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, aye. Mr. Burr, Mr. Burr, no. Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Coates, Mr. Coates, aye. Mrs. Shaheen, aye. Mr. Crapo, no. Mr. Tester, no. Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mr. Blumenthal, aye. Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Bingaman, aye. Mr. Lee, no. Mr. Casey. Mr. Casey, aye. Mr. Udall of Colorado, aye. Mr. Durbin, aye. Mr. Warner, aye. Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Kyle, no. Mr. Barrasso, no. Mr. Thune, no. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye. Mr. Corker, Mr. Corker, no. Mr. Nelson, Nebraska, aye. Mr. Coons, Mr. Coons, aye. Ms. Klobuchar, Ms. Klobuchar, aye. Mr. Wicker, no. Mr. Inhofe, no. Mr. Roberts, no. Mrs. Gillibrand, aye. Mr. Rich, no. Mr. Heller, no. Mrs. Feinstein. Mrs. Feinstein, aye. Mr. Harkin. Mr. Harkin, aye. Mr. Webb. Mr. Webb, aye. Mr. Leahy, aye. Mrs. Hagan, Mrs. Hagan, aye. Mr. Bozeman, Mr. Bozeman, no. Mr. Toomey, Mr. Toomey, no. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, aye.
Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole, aye. Mrs. Murray. Mrs. Murray, aye. Mr. Blunt, no. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, no. Mr. Cochran, no. Mr. Sessions, no. Mr. Graham, no. Ms. Ms. Murkowski, no. Mr. Pryor, no. Mr. Moran, no. <laughs> Alexander? Mr. Alexander, no. Mr. Schumer? Mr. Schumer? Mr. Schumer? Aye. Mr. Baucus? Mr. Baucus, no. Mr. Portman? No. Mr. Paul? No. Mr. Lautenberg? Mr. Lautenberg, no. Mrs. Boxer? Mrs. Boxer, aye. Mr. Shelby, no. Mr. Hoven, no. Ms. Landrew, aye. Mr. McCain. Mr. McCain, no. Mr. No Way, aye.
Mr. Merkley, no. Mr. Udall of New Mexico, aye. Ms. Stabenow, aye. Mrs. McCaskill, yeah. aye. Mr. Lautenberg, aye.
Mr. Reed of Nevada, no. Any senators wishing to cast their votes? The Senate will be in order. Any senators wishing to cast their votes? On this vote, the yeas are 52, the nays are 46. Three-fifths of the senators duly chosen and sworn not having voted in the affirmative, the motion is not agreed to. The Mr. majority President. leader is recognized. The Senate will be in order. I enter a motion to reconsider the vote by which cloture was not in vote. The motion is entered. Under the previous order, the question occurs on Amendment Number 2771, offered by the Senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Coburn. Senator, the majority leader is recognized. We expect one more vote today. We ho I haven't had a chance to talk in detail with Senator McConnell yet, but I hope to have a vote. It's on a judge. It, we hope to have it at 2 o'clock today, so people can make their schedules accordingly. Question is on the amendment, Number 2771, offered from the, by the Senator from Oklahoma. I ask for the yeas and nays and yield back whatever time I have. Is this sufficient second? There appears to be second. There's one. There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Ayotte, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Balkis. Mr. Baggage. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bangaman. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Boxer. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Cardin. Mr. 
Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran. Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad. Mr. Coons. Mr. Corker. Mr. Cornyn. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Enzi. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley. Mrs. Hagen. Mr. Harkin. Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller. <laughs> Mr. Hoven. <laughs> Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhofe. <laughs> Mr. Inouye. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Johans. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Where are you? Mr. Carey. Mr. Kirk. Ms. Klobuchar. Mr. Cole. Mr. Kyle. Ms. Landrieu. Mr. Lautenberg. Mr. Leahy. Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, 
Mr. Nelson of Nebraska. Mr. Nelson of Florida. Mr. Paul. Mr. Portman. Mr. Pryor. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Risch. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. Thank you. Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, <laughs> Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby. Ms. Snow. Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Chester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Vitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Alexander, Barrasso, Blunt, Bozeman, Burr, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Corker, Cornyn, Crapo, Dement, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hoven, Hutchison, Inhoff, Johnson of Wisconsin, Lee, McCain, Moran, Murkowski, Paul, Portman, Risch, Sessions, Shelby, Thune, Toomey, Vitter, Webb. Mr. Wicker, aye. Mr. Roberts, aye. Mr. Kyle, aye. Mr. Manchin, aye. Senators voting in the negative. Akaka, Baucus, Begich, Bennett, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Boxer, Brown of Massachusetts, Brown of Ohio, Cantwell, Cardin, Carper, Cochran, Collins, Conrad, 